Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. This is Alternatives, and my name is Devery Jackson. Uh, with today's show, many believe that we're making history by having my two following guests on the show. Um, Mr. Cleo Monago, who is the uh, founder of uh, several, different, uh, several different organizations in the community, two of which are called uh, Amasi and BMX. And with the Amasi Institute, uh, you have one in uh, Oakland and also here in uh, Inglewood. And Phil Wilson recently was the uh, director of public planning at AIDS Project Los Angeles, and he's also the founder of the Black Gay and Lesbian Leadership Forum. Now, did I say BMX or Black Men's Exchange with you? Because I wanted to say it out, Black Men's Exchange. I forgot. I'm, okay. <laughs> uh, many view these two as rivals. <clears throat> many because of the differences that they have in meeting the needs of same gender loving people in the black community. Uh, and we've got these brothers together for the first time. And uh, I guess we might as well get into it because we've got a kind of a, uh, a limited time situation. So why don't we go ahead? And my first question is, do you view yourself as a leader? And let's, let's get Phil. Well, you know, I actually don't view myself as a leader, but I'm willing to take, uh, accept the responsibility and be held accountable for the things that I do. Now, um, certainly, um, over the last number of years, I have had access to media, and certainly there are people who you know, respond or react to things that I do and or say. So although I don't view myself as a leader, I certainly you know, feel that you know, I need to be held accountable for the things that I do and the things that I say. Cleo. Well, the term leader is so precarious, and there's so many types of people that are called leaders who, who, do, dif who do different things. I consider myself more of a, of a social architect. Okay. And what I mean by that is that the um, activities that I have um, implemented have had an impact on how we talk, on language, on looking at culture, reflecting and reviewing how we do things as black people, as similar loving people. And um, one of the ways that we used to do things, and some of us still do, I think have been ways that didn't affirm us as black people. And in trying to change those things, I know that I've had an impact on conversations that are occurring in terms of us redefining ourselves as bisexual, similar loving, and the different groups different sexual groups in our community. So mm -hmm. I think I'm more of a social architect than the classic leader. People call me leader. I've never wanted, went anywhere and said, hi, I'm a leader, how are you? <laughs> you know, I've never done that, but I'm you know, constantly being referred to as such. I, I'm also curious, what prompted you to, or inspired you to start the different organizations that you started? Um, with uh, BMX, what needs were you trying to supply uh, to the black same gender loving community when you first started the organization and are those still those needs still being met well um, <clears throat> before the black men's exchange i had been doing um, community mental health work social work if some law enforcement work um, social change and social services work in the black community since i was sixteen years old mm -hmm. so i've always had a history of creating some type of context for us to address our different needs mm -hmm. and as i grew up in the so-called gay community I saw how that community, which in my opinion is white, did not address the culturally specific needs of us in our community and how we were left hanging and marginalized. And that always put us at risk for a lot of social problems, um, isolation, um, drug abuse, um, different things. And then when the HIV virus came in, a lot of the risk factors that had an impact on our lifespan increased. But the Black Men's Exchange was created as a um, building block from other things I had done because over years I had, had a view that things were not being done for our community with emphasis on black men. Um, black men as diverse people, as diverse sexually. And a lot of the, cl the classic gay things that were occurring, I felt were marginalizing us. So I wanted to build something for black people inside of the black community where it would not be stressful or traumatic to go get what we need. I want to be accessible okay. and be right there where we are. And it was done for black men who love men and men of diverse sexual expression in the black community and I wasn't there before BMX was built and so, I felt it needed to be there. Okay, so you filled a void with that one and is BMX still supplying those needs today? 
Yeah, BMX has gone through all kinds of transformations because it's never been a, an organization that has, has had a lot of money. We operated on on human power, on need, on people's real strong urge to love themselves. Uh -huh. And it's made all kinds of transitions based on the climate. Right now, we're as opposed to being um, what we started off as, which was a support rap empowerment session, mm -hmm. we still have that going on, but we're more of a communications clearinghouse, more of a mentor program. We get, we get brothers together throughout okay. the country who come to different parts of the country who need some camaraderie, some support to connect with other brothers, and we provide that for each other nationally, and in some cases internationally, if you include Jamaica and Britain. And you have chapters in many of these? Um, chapters or contacts okay. in, in most of these places. Okay. And with the Black Gay and Lesbian <coughs> Leadership Forum, uh, when you first started that organization, by the way, how long ago was that for you? Well, the forum will just had its ninth annual conference and uh, will be going into this <coughs> into its tenth year. And for you, so. BMX is 1989. Okay. And when you first started the leadership forum, what needs were you supplying in the community at the time? And is that organization still doing it in your estimation? Well, you know, similar to Cleo, you know, uh, I grew up in Chicago. Well, I mean, not the Cleo grew up in Chicago, but I grew up in Chicago. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, through the you know, Operation <coughs> Push and Breadbasket and Black Expo uh, experience. Uh, and I came out in the early 80s, um, right around you know, HIV and AIDS, or at that time, GRID. And a lot of my um, politicization as a gay man happened in an AIDS environment. And, and in, the er in the early 80s, I did a lot of work around AIDS issues. Uh, and in 1986, I guess it was, um, I was one of the people who participated in um, the first uh, national conference on AIDS and minority communities. Uh, that conference was held in Atlanta. And at that conference, you know, they basically ignored the issue of AIDS among black gay men, which was certainly a shock to me because when you look at where the epidemic was then and quite frankly where the epidemic is now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, AIDS among men who have sex with men it, you know, is certainly a high percentage of the cases in the black community. Um, and um, I felt very strongly that there is a need for there to be a forum for African American, lesbian, and gays to come together and to talk about the issues that impact us. You know, basically the concept was, you know, if not us, who, if not now, when. Okay. Uh, and the original concept <coughs> was just for us to come together. I had no idea at that time that we would create, in fact, an organization or go on. The idea was just to create a conference. As a result of the first conference, a group of people came together and said, you know, we really should do an organization, an organization that you know, continues this kind of discourse, continue this forum where people can come together and provide technical assistance for people uh, and, and, and ways for people to connect with each other. Uh, and that was kind of the basis of the creation of the National Black Gay and Lesbian Leadership Forum. So, uh, and back in that time period when you first started, it did fill a void. <coughs> it was meeting the needs. Where is it now in terms of meeting the needs that you can see? Well, you know, I, th I still think that there's you know, a need for us to come together to talk, you know, uh, and to exchange ideas and to do kind of technology transfer or knowledge transfer. And I think that the annual conference at the Forum does, you know, pr provide that, that, uh, that th provides a venue uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. I think in addition to that, there is a great need for there to be, you know, political discourse. Um, and you know, the forum you know, has an infrastructure uh, where some people can also do that. Okay, okay. And so there's a few misconceptions, I suppose, uh, out there about the type of work that the two of you do with your various organizations. Um, maybe we should talk about those misconceptions and also those differences. What do you see as differences? Uh, let's start with you. <coughs> Well, as Phil was talking, I was reminiscing because I was around in Los Angeles where the, where the forum was founded at that time. And, um, and you were present at some of the very first meetings. I was present at some of the very first meetings and attempted to get involved in that, um, in that effort. And one of the things that concerned me about it was, as far as I was concerned, it wasn't an effort that would f 
based on who I saw involved and a lot of the a lot of the programs that are being built, it was not something that was going to really provide leadership in the black community at large. I thought it was providing something to a smaller group of more more like interracialist groups. And when I saw the the literature that came out, which did not talk to the black community, I got very concerned. And I don't want to spend a half the show with my concerns, okay. but um, I just want to put out there that we obviously have a different view of that, of, of the in, at least the initial makings of the conference, and based on what he at least how what Phil just explained in terms of how what who was it was for, what it was going to do, and what its purpose was. And so when you mention misconceptions. It's difficult for me to address misconceptions about myself because I don't often know them until the, sh the other shoe falls or something like that, or if I'm lucky enough to be mistaken for somebody else and I get to hear about Cleo Monago, <laughs> okay. which has occurred. Which has I mean, occurred. You know, some people told me all about how short I was and all kinds of stuff right in my face. So um, I can talk about misconceptions once I hear what they are and address them, mm -hmm. but to just come out and say, something about them is difficult. Well, for me, you know, I'd have to say that, you know, one misconception, and we actually kind of <laughs> touched on this before the show started, was that, that there's this great animosity, you know, between Cleo and I, and I have to say that I don't feel that and have never felt that, you know, um, and um, feel very, you know, in, in, in many ways, you know, Cleo provides for me, you know, things to think about. You know, and, and that is important for me, you know. Uh, I guess one of the other misconceptions that I would add, you know, that as I look at the work that I do, you mm -hmm. know, I, you know I, I often, you know, kind of remind myself that I don't have a clue whether or not, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, or what I believe, you know, is going to get me or us where, you know, um, I believe, you know, we need to go. I'm not even sure that where I believe we need to go is where we need to go. Okay. You know? And so it's important for me for there to be lots of folks thinking about and talking about and, and, and doing these things because I think that kind of cross-fertilization is, is important. You know, so I don't view Cleo as, as a, a rival or, or in any, you know, I, I, I view us you know, as colleagues actually and as, as people who are passionate about you know, you know, a whole host of communities well, let me, trying to do the best we can do. Let me attempt to address what I think is the foundation of the of the um, rival, if you will, and some of the misconceptions. One of the misconceptions that I get concerned about now that we're thinking about it and the wheels have started turning okay. is that I think that people accuse both of us, and I know I've heard it, of doing things in reaction to each other. Like I'm doing the Black Men's Exchange in reaction to Phil Wilson. I've been an activist since I was 16, way before I knew Phil Wilson walked on the planet and was creating activities and, and possibilities for the black community before I knew that he even was breathing in and out. So that does not make any sense. But still, because Phil has had more of a venue for a voice, in my opinion, because he's more affirmed by the white gay community and more, ex more um, safe, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of how the kind of black people the society at large likes to approach. I have been, my voice has been kind of marginalized, and most of who I'm about has come out through rumors or through articles written by interracialists through, through BLK Magazine when I was around. And this is one of the first times I've ever had a chance to speak to the community on my own behalf, not in writing, but with my own mouth. One of the things that concerned me about what Phil was doing was not an attack on the human being Phil, because I have, this is the first time in history, if this goes beyond 15 minutes, that we've <laughs> had this kind of a, this long of a conversation in the same place. But um, it was style. As far as I was concerned, what Phil was doing in the beginning was, as I said earlier, was not something that the black community, which is in desperate need for something, what is in desperate need to be empowered, to be touched, to be loved, to be affirmed, to have resources, I feel like what Phil had been creating was not that. And I feel like it was an interracialist, black and white man together agenda, which is a minority group's concern and interest and has nothing to do with the large or the lion's share of black people. And the form was called black leadership, which implied that it was for blacks, period. And I felt like and still feel, but especially then I think there's been some adjustments made over the years, but especially in the beginning, I was angry and frustrated about this, this what I thought was a mirage 
being created allegedly on behalf of black people that I knew from what all the literature I saw, all the meetings that I did attend that you mentioned I was at earlier, mm -hmm. was interracial, it was black and white men together people and interracial black men and women, m many who had never even been to the black community. Mm -hmm. And having, having had been an activist forever, when I first heard about the conference and heard it was had gone so far along in its development, and a lot of us in the community who had been there forever weren't involved in this black thing that was for Sandra and Loving at the time, gay and lesbian people, it felt very offensive. It felt classically how I expect to be treated by a lot of brothers who have a more, a more exclusive interest for white, for white men. And so my concern was about the philosophy of, of this whole thing, which and I thought the philosophy of it was not something that black people were going to benefit from the way that I think we need to. Mm -hmm. So, to the best of my ability, I've kind of addressed what this so-called rival was about. It's not about Phil Wilson personally. He can sleep with chickens. I don't care what he sleep with. But if he creates a leadership form called um, black people, then bring a bunch of chickens to the form instead of doing black issues, that concerns me. And then it starts to look personal because his personal agenda, in my opinion, is what drives this thing as opposed to what, to what the community needs. What do you think about all this? How would you respond? I think that that's you know, a good point. I mean, you know, it is true that, you know, again, you know, my, my world view, you know, uh, I'm a, a, multi, a, a multiculturalist, you know, you know my, my politicization, you know, came out of, you know, like I said, I, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, you know, I became aware of, of many of the issues around race and, and, and culture in connection with, you know, the early civil rights movement and, and Martin Luther King's specific visit to Chicago and, and Cicero and all of that. And so, you know, absolutely, that is, a, that is a part of my worldview. I view myself as, as, as a, a bridge builder, you know, and a coalition builder in, in, that, in, 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 in that regard. So I certainly un understand that. I think that, you know, Again, we we have different perspectives and we have different worldviews, and I think that that's important. I've 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 heard uh, some criticism myself um, uh, about the leadership forum, perhaps maybe preaching to the converted, if you will. I mean that perhaps maybe some of the outreach doesn't really go outside too much from uh, south of Wilshire or people that are very comfortable being quote unquote out if you will. What about the brothers and sisters who really don't feel comfortable aligning themselves with a movement that doesn't necessarily affirm us, which many feel that the gay movement is. is. Which is different from being out. So I want to make that real clear and I'll do it shortly. There's a difference between being out and not having an affinity for the mainstream gay community in blackface. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot of people in our community who are comfortable with themselves, who don't want to be bothered with lambdas from Greece, triangles from Germany, and all this European ethos stuff that the gay community is built around. They want to be affirmed for who they are as they are, because the culture has marginalized us, uh, us enough, and our lack of self-knowing have puts us at, a, at risk for a lot of things as we try to find ourselves, uh, including HIV and AIDS, and things that happen during sexual trying to find yourself sexually in the midst of wondering whether you're worthy of living or not. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to talk about the difference between coming out into the white gay perspective with a black face, which, which I think the forum was built on, on top of, and not, and, and not wanting to be a part of that, because often people from that camp call people who don't want to be a part of it homophobic or in or, the closet, closeted, right. and I'm far from being in the closet. I mean, give me a break. But I don't want to be bothered with the white triangles as my representation and right. emblems that, 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 uh, that embrace me, because they don't, they're not, they're not who I am. But now, you have expressed some concern that perhaps maybe a, a little more sensitivity in these areas might be something good to implement at the forum, and, and I wondered if you had put well, programs in. I mean, it always, you no, know, it, it certainly is, is, an, is a very you know, legitimate issue and a concern that I have. Now, who are we talking to? You know, and, and what is this all about? You know, not just the forum, but all of our, our organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, and as you know, black people who are same gender loving, you know, we have to find ways to affirm ourselves and to you know create venues to do that and symbols that that speak to that. You know, um, but you were resistant to that feel. No, I've never been resistant to when that. When we talked yeah. about that a long time ago, about making sure that the forum had more people involved from the black community, there was resistance. No, that's not true. Okay, well, it'll take us a whole it certainly would. several hours yeah. to, to talk well, about that. It, but that's how a lot of people true. in the community, that's how 21 black, same gender loving people, men and women, felt back in 1989 when they protested that conference, that it was not including their issues as black people. 
So that's not just Cleo Monago. I mean, that's what the press and interracialist press keep saying. It's just Cleo, just Cleo. But there's lots of people nationally to this day who had a similar concern. So I don't think we all were delusional. I don't think that that, that anyone was de delusional. I think that that the point is that there's ne there's never been anything you now deliberate you now or in the infrastructure of the forum to say otherwise or resistance to more people being involved. But I don't know if, if the forum is really that important to spend the entire show talking mm -hmm. about what works or what isn't working mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the forum. I think that a form, the forum is one venue, you know, it's, it's one organization. The truth of the matter is we need lots of organizations. You now we need lots of people to get involved. You know, we need people to look at what is it that they need and what's not happening and find ways to make that happen. And that could be g coming into existing organizations and, and changing those organizations if need be or, con or expanding those organizations or if need be or creating new organizations. Well, have we been supportive? And this was a question to you. Have we been supportive of each other's voices? Have we have we made room to make sure that the collective is heard from? And like I mean, you someone who I think is quite quite approachable to the mainstream community. Mm -hmm. you're, you're always plastered as the black gay person of, of the planet. And I, with all that, with all that, with all that um, exposure, you were in the position, having a position to you, to voice the need for a collective collective ways of viewing things, to voice the need or the idea about black people loving themselves, embracing themselves, defining themselves in ways that are more from their community as opposed to the repeating the white triangle stuff in blackface. And I haven't seen that much of that from you. Man, I, I don't follow you around like a fly either. I'm sure you do. But I mean, I know that um, I hear a lot of stuff. People call me all the time. People probably call you all the time regarding what we are doing. Right, right. <laughs> I just went to the forum and Cleo, guess what happened? You know, I mean, this kind of stuff happens all the time. I don't ask people to call me. It's unsolicited, but it occurs. And the point is that I don't think that you have used those resources to talk about and bring voice to the need for a collective approach to these things. I think you've been basically doing what you think you need to be doing that's more your own purview. And I think that's marginalized a lot of people. Well, first of all, you know, if you read you know, the volumes of stuff that I've written or the speeches that I've given, you know, what you'll find is that, in fact, that is a common thread through almost all of them. You know, um, that, that whole notion of expansion, a whole notion of people finding their own voice and people helping people find their own voice to the extent that they, they can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so yes, I think I have been doing that, you know, and, um, and quite frankly, Cleo, you know, most regularly, you know, I support your voice. You know, um, you know that's something that I, I, I mean, I support your voice. I believe in the things that, that you're doing. You know, um, and I believe in the things that I'm doing, and I and I believe in both of those things when they're not when they're not the same, when they're different. Because, like I said, I don't know where we're going. I don't know how we're going to get there. I know that our that that there are a lot there's a lot of pain in our community, you know, and I sure. know that 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 more of us need to commit to finding ways to solve that to, to solve that. And I don't believe any of us you know have really has a clue as to how to make that happen. And it's going to require diverse energy to get there. And, and that's prayer. true. I I've, I've always believed in diversity, and I've always believed in sending people toward what you're what you're developing. Because y'all have so much money, we, the, the folks can benefit from <laughs> well, that. Well, that's a misconception. But, um, first well, of okay, well, okay, well, because the so forum doesn't so have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, we will, okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that later. But the point is that I said there's some resources over there. Go get them. <laughs> I don't got none in terms of money. I got a lot of love and support and some philosophy for you, but money. Yeah, I go over to the, to the leadership forum. But the point is that. I don't. I still don't believe that there. I have not seen in the snippets that I've seen of you, which not have been many, but there's been some, mm -hmm. and some have been brought to me. A there's a difference between writing things down and rhetoric and putting something on a notepad or whatever you write in. I don't know what you write in computer, laptop, who knows, mm -hmm. but what you write in. Anyway, <laughs> the point is that I've not seen any physical invite. Like, I've never seen you invite me, for example, by name. Like Cleo Monago is doing this work in the black community um, over here in South Central or in Oakland or in Denver and, and, and or in New York or Detroit where we're doing all this work at. And his, and his voice is so important because I believe in diversity. I'm going to make sure that I support that his voice is heard. I'm sure you, I, agree. I, I mean, I'm sure if you say you haven't heard it, you haven't heard it. But I've said it. Oh. And done it. <laughs> okay, I guess, I guess I've just been missing that. Well, now, so in your estimation, then, both of you actually, um, and most recently in the Million Man March. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. What happened at the Million Man March? Well, I was there, by the way. You know that. Of course, you. Was, we was, both, we both know that we were there. Okay. okay. I mean, during during the Million Man March, when there was a discussion about there being an open, openly gay speaker, you know, 
I happened to have been called to ask that. And quite frankly, your name was the first name that I came up with. Interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I knew there were a lot of other people who had brought up my name, and I was supposed to speak, but I didn't know that Phil was among them. <laughs> well, okay, well, that, now, now that's, 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 that's good. That's good to know. You know, another thing we don't do enough in our community, too, is we don't always give that shout-out. We don't always write I that agree. letter or send that fax and I let agree. people know that, hey, man, I, I can't catch up with you, but I'm behind you. Well, yeah. you know, just so the people can know, Phil and I have talked. We we, we communicated when they, when the, during the um, the uprising. Remember, we talked on the mm -hmm. phone because um, I was I reached out to Phil and saying, man, you know, that. we we have this great opportunity because our community is hungry because of this this disaster that has occurred. Let's do something. It didn't pan out where we really did anything, but it was an outreach to Phil and trying to share concerns. And Phil did some activities, if I remember, remember correctly, in Simi Valley. Mm -hmm. But in terms of us doing something with our, both of our organizations, which is what I was hoping would happen, to broaden the spectrum, if, if you will, that, that did not occur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember right after the uprising when we all got together there and we were, we were doing some things too, it was at one of the churches, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Um, Reverend Gaither's church. Yeah, up at Western and 108th. So I remember that very, very clearly. Yeah. And uh, BMX had invited the community to, to South Central baby, to talk about our issues. It was deep. As it related to the. They had a curfew going on or something. We had to scurry and get across town and we were supposed to leave, but we were, we were there. And I was very, very glad to see that kind of support at the time. Every time Phil and Wilson and I, and I get in the same room, there's all this talk and all this gladness. But I wish it went beyond just those, those spurts. Well, maybe it can. Yeah. Maybe this will be a step in the right direction so that we can start doing that. Well, we're getting ready to uh, run out of some time here. Um, I just want to thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the show uh, with Phil Wilson and Cleo Minago. A look for an interview on the printed pages. Alternatives is a free magazine in the community, and you can find it all over town at bookstores and record stores and bars and restaurants. And pick it up. Check us out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.